In this video, we're going to have a detailed look at the CPEN read the pen of the reading functionality. And then in a separate video, we are going to look at all the additional functions of the reader pen. So let's take it out of its box. So here's the protective case. To turn it on, you simply push this red on button for two seconds. And it will turn itself on in a minute. I'm going to put away the box now. And it only takes a few seconds for it to turn on. And we're going to try it on two slightly different texts to see where it falls and where it succeeds. And it mostly succeeds, as you will see. So here we are, land on the main menu, and then we can use these up and down arrows to choose the mode. We can just choose the basic mode is the text reader, which is what we'll be trying. But you can use also the scan to file feature, which means that you can then connect it to your computer and copy everything that you've scanned into onto your computer, which is great for students when they're taking notes in the library, for example. Now I'm going to just simply use these up and down arrows to scroll up and then use the on this little OK button to get into the reader. And there we are. And now it simply starts reading. So the way to use the pen for scanning is simply hold it up at, it says sort of 90 to 70 degree angle. So I try to do it at, at quite, a, quite a straight angle. And then you simply, you don't have to push it. You're just going to let it fall to the text, to the page and then um, start and then start um, dragging along the line of text. And so that's, let's see how that works. You don't have to be very picky about it. You don't have to be too slow. So there you go, it did a perfect job. You know, I, I wasn't doing anything special here. I didn't have to concentrate. I just simply dragged it and got this great scanning and then read it out in a really nice voice. Of course, if I was in a room with other people, I would just put my headphones in, but then for the video, you couldn't see that. Uh, you couldn't hear that. And also on the video, you may be see seeing some flickering of the screen, but there actually is no flickering in, in real life. And that's just because that's just how the videos of screens work. So it works like that perfectly. So it works on one line. Now it only does one line at a time. Uh, so I'm just going to go out of that mode using the back button and then go back in to sort of start over. So it only does one line. So I have to just go and start again, but you can also scan this whole paragraph and then uh, scroll up and read it. So let's try that. So I'm just gonna go like this, scan the first line. It starts reading immediately, but you don't have to pay any attention to that. Because every time I start a new line, it starts reading the new line, doesn't continue. But I then scroll, I then just use this up button, I scroll up with the text all the way up, and then all the way to the beginning of the line. My up, there we go. And you can see as I'm scrolling, I'm checking that it, it did a really good job of scanning it all accurately. So I just scroll to the beginning and then I push the OK button. So it doesn't scroll with it. I can I have to do it myself, but uh, it just reads the whole thing. So so that that's really useful. Uh, that's really useful to uh, to have, and it did a really good job of scanning the the whole paragraph. And of course, the same feature will work if you're trying to uh, listen again to something you just scanned. So I think that's really useful. Now this was uh, maybe quite fast if you're particularly if you're reading a, a difficult text. So. If you press the menu button here, you get uh, options and you can choose the reading setting. So I can use the down arrow and I can increase the volume. Let me do that so you can hear me better. And then I can go and slow it down as well a little bit. So let's see how it reads now. This last sentence. There you go. Yeah, so it's, it slows it down. I often prefer listening faster so I can get more done. And some people, if you get used to that, you may do that as well. So let's see what that sounds like when it's faster. That's that's also quite acceptable. So that, that's all good. 
the other option here in the menu is you can choose the adding mode and that just means whether when you scan a new bit it adds it to what you've scanned before or replaces what you scanned before i have it to append which is a default but if you get confused easily and you just want to do the one thing then replace may be a better option for you but then the paragraph trick i show you would not work so there we go so that that's that's really good so that's uh your, your standard this is a standard text from a gcse exam so that worked really well so let's see uh, something a bit more challenging so here i have the dyslexia review and that's um that's a that's a, that's a dyslexia journal and so let's see if it works on articles now i'm just going to use the back button to go out of this mode and because that's the way that's the best way i found to delete what's in there and let's see so okay so here's something potentially challenging so there's white text on on the blue background so let's see how that does Okay, so it did, did a good job. It misread the respect, but that could have just been me shaking. Respected. So it does that fine, but I, I must, my hand was a bit wobbly as I did as, as I went along. So that, that was really, really good. Uh, obviously, it wouldn't work with this T here, but let's see if it works with something like a bigger text. I think I did this at too much of an angle. Let's try again. So it struggled with this. I have to be, uh, sometimes this works with this large text. It says the biggest is um, 22, I believe, points. So so this is just on the edge, probably a bit outside. So it does struggle with big title text, but, but generally that isn't always the most important thing for people to read. So let's see how it does with uh, slightly smaller titles. Published by. That's no problem at all. Let's see how it does with a telephone number. Oh, again, that works really well. So that will work. it does work with business cards. I, I don't have any here to try it on. So let's see just if we do a text that it's here is interrupted by some bold. So we are also delighted the Dr. Lindsay PSEBE. Yeah, that works perfectly. No issues there. And this blue title here. Conference in the evening of Wednesday, the twenty seventh. Okay, works like dream. Okay, now here we're coming to some something potentially challenging here is a table. So tables uh, could be a problem because all these lines around in, uh, get in the way. So let's see if it works 70. with, yeah, so that works. It didn't read the pound sign. So so that, that would be nice if it did that, but that's uh, it's a small thing. Let's try this. Okay, so it works even on in these in these edge cases. So that's, that's really, really useful. And so let's see if here if we can, find something else okay so here is this uh, it's quite large text but it's in italics oh, that there's no problem at all it does it doesn't really struggle with with the uh, italics or bold so let's try some numbers here in this table yeah, okay no problem and the numbers here so the numbers it's it's not a, not a problem but it does not deal with a dash. It would be nice if it read the dash. Um, obviously, it will not deal with mathematical formulas, but if you do, let's say this with some underscore. So it, 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 it definitely recognizes the SEM, even though the M is an underscore, but it, it doesn't uh, read out anything of that nature. Let's see if it, how it, how it deals with something like this in the inside. So, so it, it will struggle with something that's very strange. Yeah, so it will. So so that that it didn't work on that, but that really wasn't something you would use this for, and I would not have expected that. Let's see how it does with something like a reference, which again is a very edge edge case. Oh, perfect, it just works perfectly. So it's definitely really reliable for almost anything that you would want to do in a normal in a normal setting. So let's try this on a column text. Okay, that works fine. I didn't go quite to the end of the line here, so that was it didn't read the, the, the end of the word. So sometimes you have to pay attention to that. But otherwise, I uh, did not find. Let's see. This here's a little bit of a. 
Yeah, so it even deals with sort of picture uh, uneven background. Again, very much an, an edge case. So it works. Uh, for, it will work for newspapers, for journals. So let's see. Here I have another challenge for it, and that is uh, a brochure. That is a brochure from a water company. So let's see how it does with this. So let's just uh, try this. Back to basics as okay, so that was a bit of a struggle with, with this, but that's partly because I went... So that works really well. There was just one little hiccup, but that occasionally your hand will shake. So that, that happens here and there. Let's try it on this. No, oh, perfect. And I, my hand even twisted a little bit. So that that was uh, it, it is very good. So let's see how it does with this with this text that's kind of wiggly. Well, it, it didn't be too badly with this. It's, it, there was a bit of a hiccup, but again, this is not what it's for. I'm, I'm really just uh, trying to do something extra here. So let's see, here is a text that's underlined in the sort of funny font. No problem with that at all. So so as long as the text is reasonably in a line and, and it's, it's, it's a text that's uh, fairly normal, it just doesn't struggle with, with that at all. You know, obviously um, it will... It has a limit on the size of text, so something like this just won't even deal. It will just see that as gibberish. Uh, but something even like this, let's see. Please read. Yeah, again, with the, the D kind of uh, stumped it. But again, we're, we're just picking, nitpicking here. So it does really, really well. So the final challenge is its own box. Very often people get these instruction boxes. And so let's see how it does with that. So let's should be no problem okay so the problem of course would be with something very tiny so let's see oh perfect they just did that just perfectly let's do something even small okay so so it's a struggle with that but that's because it's on quite on exactly on the edge of the box and there's some pictures in the way so so that so so it's not a hundred percent for something like a box i've tried it on a on a medicine box and it did okay but sometimes bumps and edges got in the way so it won't read quite everything but it just no problem as long as the text you can get to it it's fine it even even here on the very edge it just dealt with that perfectly so uh, in general, it's fine. Let's see if it's on this edge. Okay, that worked really well with that. It's it's on the bottom edges that it struggles because you need to have this little push button needs to get a purchase on something. Otherwise, uh, full marks. So it just works really, uh, really well. There's just no, uh, for this purpose, for either for taking notes or for having text read out to you, anybody who needs that. This full recommendation, it is an excellent product that will help you uh, with your reading in most situations and uh, could help somebody who has sight issues, but definitely somebody who struggles with decoding, such as people with dyslexia. So that is the C-Pen Reader Pen. We will now have a look at some of its other functionality in a separate video.